Welcome to another exciting edition of the Next Level TV program. Today is a very wonderful weather in, in, in London. We are swimming between 20 to 25 degrees and everybody is buzzing all over the place. But we are here to inspire you. That's a big sacrifice. What are we going to talk about today? Our world is changing at a faster rate. Are you changing to be abreast with time? Because when we look at the human capital development, technology, science revolution, life is really moving at a faster rate. If you don't move abreast with time, you'll be priced out of the market. So we are here to talk about one important topic that can make a difference to your life. And that is the principles of managing personal change. And this is a very powerful discussion because change is really moving at a faster rate in our lives today, especially in the 21st century. You go for this phone, for example, this phone today, the next week there is a new version. And that's how life is moving. Are you abreast with time? That's the question I'm asking you. But for us to find answers to such topic, I've got an expert in the building to really talk about this pertinent topic that is really can give us an insight to how we can manage change to achieve our dreams in life. Who do I have on the horse seat? She is a person I met about four years ago. And since then, her inspiration, the way she goes about her issues, her, the motive of trying to live a legacy before she leaves this earth, that is her passion in terms of change management. Rebecca Gordon, please welcome to Z uh, Zip TV. And Thank you me. are on the Next Level TV show. Thank you so much, Oscar. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a long time. It That's has. about 2010 when we met, right? Yes. On a coaching course. Yes, exactly. Yes, we, we, we met so long ago, but um, it seems just like the other day, actually. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it seems like yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So how have you been keeping? Um, I've been keeping very well since I last met you, um, since I met you at that um, occasion. Um, I've actually um, gone through a lot of change myself. Um, much change and one of the most significant changes is that um, I'm the CEO of my own business mm -hmm. which is a corporated um, incorporated limited company satellite life coaching and training and um, that has been established since 2010 now mm -hmm. um, and um, a lot of transformation has taken yes, place yes. which I've had to accommodate and apply the principles of change management um, in order to reach where I am today you went to Ghana you are now all over the place. <laughs> in fact, um, I've been to Ghana on several occasions. Um, I class myself as not just local. I'm from Birmingham in the West mm. Midlands. I'm national, but importantly, I'm international. So I actually have done quite a lot of, lot of international work, um, which has involved going to Tanzania, um, mm. Jamaica to do training, Romania to do training as well, and Ghana, yes. um, where I did some um, voluntary work and um, also um, on the last occasion, I was hosted by um, the CEO of Enrich Consulting to um, carry out some talks, which I did in Accra and Kumasi as well. You were even on TV3. I was. I was <laughs> on Ghana, which is the equivalent <laughs> to the BBC. See, yeah, which is equivalent <laughs> to the BBC. Exactly, yes. Yeah. yes. And that was a, an amazing experience, an early morning, um, yeah. getting out at 4 yeah. o'clock to get to the studio very early yeah. and to prepare for that. So um, that, that was a, a, an amazing um, experience. But that's very great because you have one passion to really bring change, mm -hmm. you know, that mm. change, that change brings shock to people, mm -hmm. but you are trying to give people the shock absorbers mm -hmm. to really handle change mm -hmm. better. Exactly. We always start this program with a motivational quote of the day. Yes. And our motivational quote of the day is by Leo Tolstoy. Mm -hmm. He is a Russian writer and philosopher. What did he say? He says, Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Mm -hmm. That is very powerful. It is indeed. I mean, we need to um, take time to reflect on the quotes that we see all over the place on, on uh, Facebook, people post I quotes, etc. Yes. But do we actually understand what the quote means? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, in terms of that quote, um, 
change is about the transformation that takes place internally. Mm. Um, so we have an, an external event, which um, Martha Beck, the American Life Coach, who's a great coach who um, I aspire to, mm. um, she talks about um, change as a catalytic event. Mm -hmm. um, and what does that mean? Similar to, you've got um, saliva, we have saliva, mm -hmm. and the saliva has enzymes in it, mm -hmm. which actually break down food in the body mm -hmm. um, so that we can digest the food. Um, that's what change does. Change is a catalytic event which impacts upon us, which means that actually we're going through some internal transformation, which we don't quite understand, which is where um, my course and what I help people do to understand about change comes in. Before we go further, right? Yes. An ordinary person on the street, mm. what is change in one person's life? And that is a good question. We go through change every day. You know, we mm. can have the several changes in a day. We can have significant lifetime changes. But let me just give you some of the top um, life stresses which um, impact upon um, the, the change we experience that we call change. So we have um, the death of a spouse mm -hmm. um, or a family member, which is a major stressor, um, which is change. We also have um, divorce, which is high up on the scale of stressful events mm -hmm. um, that we have to accommodate change within and about. There's also divorce. Um, there's also um, redundancy, mm -hmm. you know, losing your job. Um, being made unemployed, all of that is change that, you know, we, we don't recognize that there are principles to manage that. Just to add on that there are changes which are positive, mm -hmm. such as getting married. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is a change. Yes. yes. Um, and getting a promotion at work. Getting a promotion at work, having a baby. Uh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Starting a business and the money starting coming in. Exactly. <laughs> all of that is change. Mm -hmm. And there are specific principles, and I call this um, a framework. Um, a better term might be a blueprint of um, strategies and tools and techniques that we can um, draw on to help us to remain um, buoyant within the change. Who is responsible for change? Um, uh, it is that um, change can happen in, in, in different ways. Um, the, the change that normally we really associate with is change that is imposed upon us. So mm -hmm. for example, that could be a change that the employer brings into the work mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've got to, you've been doing something the same so way for 10, 15, 15 20 years. years. All of a sudden, there's change, yes. you know. It's, it's <laughs> like using, using Windows 95 for a long time and now they say all of a sudden use yes. <laughs> Windows 2010. Exactly. And exactly. <laughs> that's yes. a big change, it, you know. It can be, yes. Even technology, as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, so it can phones. break or make you, right? It can, it can. So that's one um, change which is imposed change. The other change is self-initiated change mm -hmm. that we recognize actually um, this situation can't remain any longer or something has to happen in my life now for me to get to where I want to be. And then we think, okay, well, I may have to start a course. I may need to, you know, get another job or do something to change something about my life, about my environment, about my situation. So um, there is um, initiated change, self-initiated change, and imposed change. So that means you're talking about change that is internally, yes. and change that is being brought about from the external that, environment. That, that, that's correct, yes, yes. So the one within, the internal one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have control over it? Um, well, we need to understand, and this is the thing, it's about labelling mm. what's going on in terms of the internal transformation. And this is what the principles are about. It's about how to attain and remain and um, have some control. So, for example, if it's... Um, let, let's talk about the change. Whatever it is, whether it is imposed or self-initiated, mm -hmm. um, we go through a series of emotions. So um, what uh, Martha Beck in her, in fact, I should say that there are several theories of change. Um, there's, um, there's Kubler-Ross, who's a well-known change theorist, and she talks about um, change in terms of bereavement. Mm -hmm. um, there's Sklozberg, who talks about change um, in terms of counselling. Mm -hmm. And there's Hobson, who talks about stress and mm -hmm. change. And that's all good, and those theories do have a lot of principles that we can draw from. I very much like Martha Beck's um, theory of change. And she says that um, internally, this is what happens, the change happens. You've mentioned shock. Mm. Yes, we have shock. Mm. Then, um, you know, our whole world is shaken up. Mm -hmm. um, because we have an aversion to transition, 
we actually do not see the opportunity, which is a second thing that change can present. Mm -hmm. um, and either way, what happens with internal or external change is that there's some incongru incongruency um, between where we are now at the present moment to where we are going to be mm -hmm. once we get through the change. So in that um, in-between process, there's a lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts, um, which we can have control of. And there are um, some strategies for how we can have control of that. S do people have the control? Um, we, w it's about choice and it's about empowerment. So let's just talk about um, in these times, it can be said, and many people may agree, that times are hard. Would you say that times are hard? Oh, yes. <laughs> times Absolutely. Are hard. Times are hard. Very hard. So all over the world, there are cutbacks, yes? Mm -hmm. And there's austerity measures austerity being imposed, measures yes? So if we take where we live here in the UK, mm -hmm. and a lot of restrictions and constrictions mm -hmm. yeah. on funding, on, on, mm -hmm. on different things, etc., on finances, for example, it's very easy to blame the external thing mm. that um, presents that change, yes. which is the government, yeah. <laughs> okay? It's just obvious. I, it's obvious, yes. Yeah. So, so we, we actually identify and we look at that catalytic event or um, you know, person or, or thing as the, the thing where we lay all the blame on, all the emotions on. Mm. However, by doing that, we actually um, disempower ourselves. We give away our power, wherein we leave whatever happens up to um, someone else who has um, positioned themselves to impact upon our lives. When actually what we need to do is to be looking at what else can happen um, as a result of that thing that's being presented. So about, it's about taking responsibility. It is about taking responsibility. Um, taking responsibility, but in order to take responsibility, we actually need to be aware of, um, so for example, I'll give you an analogy. It's like, look at a piece of paper, mm -hmm. yeah? Imagine a piece of paper, and imagine that there are a series of dots on this paper. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you like, really. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, what can you see on the piece of paper? It's all dots. It's all dots. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is that yes. absolutely true? Yeah. I would beg to disagree. Wow. And what I would Tell say... Tell me about it then. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> what I would say is that immediately we focus on the dots. So mm -hmm. we focus on the government, we focus on the redundancy, mm -hmm. on wha what's immediately presented. And we do not straight away see that around the dots there's space. There's space. Which is opportunity. Exactly. And it's, it is about taking the responsibility to um, uh, position ourselves and to have control of ourselves within the space, mm -hmm. which is absolutely possible to do. This is very powerful, you know. Mm -hmm. Today, um, I, I gave a, um, I gave a motivational talk at church, okay. and um, it was about taking mm -hmm. responsibility of your dreams. Yes. And I made an example of the train and the bus. Right. With the train, you just need to know your destination, mm -hmm. and the driver stops for you yes. and opens the door. With the bus, mm -hmm. you need to know your destination and press the bell to alert the driver that you want to stop at this place. Right. Okay. This is the situation. I have been taking one particular bus for about three years. Right. The stop I always alight is always busy, so I don't even press the bell. Somebody will do it or somebody will be at the stop, so okay. I just get down. Yes. But for one day, it never happened. Oh. Nobody pressed the bell <laughs> and I didn't press myself oh, and it has to take me to the next stop. Right. It's about, I have giving my responsibility to some people yes. for three years yes yes without yes. taking the initiative to take it upon myself yes yes and this is what happens it's more about blame game mm. people say i want to start this dream i want mm. to do that i want to do that but they never mm. sit down mm. and say yes i want to do this but i want to take action and take responsibility mm -hmm. you say hey, for example it's because of my mother didn't look after me because mm. i was sick because i was that mm -hmm. i couldn't achieve this mm -hmm. That is blaming uh, yes, people, yes. but what is your responsibility in this? Well, action is um, absolutely important. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no, I mean, people say um, knowledge is power. Yeah. Yes, we've heard that statement banted about so often and so much. I actually, I'm a life coach, mm -hmm. so my job is to ask questions. My job is to think critically, critically. and to think differently. Yeah. So I disagree with the statement, knowledge is power, mm -hmm. because knowledge is knowledge. I'm an English language teacher, so, so, <laughs> 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 so I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge is the name of the thing. Yeah. Knowledge is a noun, mm. okay? 
knowledge is no good unless you apply what you learn. Mm -hmm. So that means, um, you know, um, if I were to have a pen and I, and I threw the pen over there on the floor and I said, Oscar, mm -hmm. can you stay where you're sitting but pick up the pen? You couldn't do mm -hmm. it. You actually have to get up, mm -hmm. you have to move, you have to apply mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about here. Okay. So um, uh, in terms of the reasons why people don't apply themselves to take responsibility in change there are some um, reasons and actually i spoke about awareness and understanding yeah. without us understanding what may stop us yeah. to be responsible within the change we very well may stay stuck where we are wow yeah. that is very powerful you know the external environment mm. right mm -hmm. you talked a little bit about the internal environment mm -hmm. the external environment right mm -hmm. Now, the external environment is bombarding mm -hmm. people with so many changes at a faster rate mm. that I believe people are not able to grasp the concept mm -hmm. of change mm. to apply yes. to overcome it. Yes. Because when you look at now, you were talking about now the economic downturn that we have. Mm. There is a lot of austerity measures, which is affecting a lot of people. You know, when you look at people who genuinely need like something like um, 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 benefit mm. to really survive, they've been cut. Mm -hmm. And these things is putting a toll on people. It's putting too much stress mm. on people. Mm -hmm. Do you think when it is too much, still people can be able to manage mm. change? Um, that's an interesting um, uh, um, statement that you've, you, you've expressed here. And um, first of all, we're actually talking about the levels of someone's ability to um, cope with what's presented. So people do have different levels of, 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 of their ability to cope. Um, what, um, let, m let me just talk about um, the change that's occurred from the external point of view and what immediately, how we immediately see that, okay? So this is about why we resist and why we think actually, you know, there's nothing we can do. Um, Similar to a thermostat, mm -hmm. um, we very much like to remain within the known, within what we know. When something happens, a catalytic event can um, it take, takes place, it shakes up our very world. Yes. Yeah? So immediately that, that shock takes place. Um, so if we think of a, a, a heater, um, a, the, the heating system in a home, mm -hmm. and when it's cold, what do we do? We turn the mm -hmm. thermostat up. Yeah. And when the room gets hot, what happens? It's the temperature cool. regulates. Mm -hmm. So the thermostat itself mm -hmm. drops. So there's self-regulation that takes place. That's what the hum human beings are like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we self-regulate. We like to stay within the tried and tested. Mm -hmm. So when something happens, we actually feel that there's some um, impact upon us so take um, a change with benefits for example um, you know what how we've always lived there's some disruption to that and we can't see that there's something else that we may be able to do and it might take time because change occurs over you know it could be a day it could be a week it could be a few weeks it could be a period of time but it is to know that we can take action um, to um, you know, position ourselves in a better way. So can I, at this point, mention why we resist change? Yes. Is that okay to do? Go yeah. On, yeah. Um, and um, I mean, it all ties in with some of the life stress stresses um, that we've mentioned before. Because it's, it's very natural. It's for, for, yes. for It's human nature. It is human nature. Because, natures. for example, let's look at it from the perspective of a job. Mm. Immediately they change your job rules, the first thing you have to do is to... Mm -hmm resist that change well we do we have to but that is human nature i think mm. it's just consciously or unconsciously mm -hmm. i think we are wired to do that okay i don't know but okay. that is that is what is happening okay people just fighting even mm. change mm. that is good for your progress, we still mm -hmm. resist it mm -hmm. before we get accustomed to. Well, well, this is true. Why is the case? And what you're saying is that naturally, that's our natural mm -hmm. tendency. That's what that's I That's a natural I believe, tendency, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so let's talk about the resistance to change. And um, one of the things is, is that the change that is to come, we don't know about. So changing is risky. Mm. However, uh, moving into the change, we see it as more riskier than standing where we are. So what we do, we actually are happy to stay within the, the present mm -hmm. risk. That so is th the comfort zone. That's the comfort zone, mm -hmm. yes. So the present risk may be, okay, so my benefits have been cut. I'll, I'll manage with this <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> some way or the yeah, other. Yeah. That's staying within the same mm -hmm. change. 
um, in terms of a, a, a job role changing. Well, I, I, I can't learn this thing, mm. so I'm going to just do what I've always done mm. because that's all I know how mm. to do because that's safe for me. That is the comfort zone. But what we need to do is recognise what we're talking about is a risk of change or the risk of remaining the same. So, immediately so is there a risk in remaining the same? There's a risk in remaining the same. Do people realise that? Well, this is what personal change management is, is about. And what I, I should um, explain is that um, the reason why I have devised the course How to Master Change in Challenging Times is because I understood exactly that. I understood that being at work, um, if you're employed and the organisation is going through tr some transition, immediately the staff members are sent on all these change management mm -hmm. courses mm -hmm. to know how to manage within the work environment. So we learn about um, all managers um, that carry out the steps in John Cotter's change management principle. Um, however, in personal change, we don't understand the, the theories and the principles. So this is where, why I've actually devised this course. But um, there is risk. So the risk in personal change management is a risk of moving into the change or the risk of staying the same. And we have to then um, quantify um, the risk in staying or the, the risk, risk in, in moving. moving. Yeah. And sometimes this is what, as a life coach, I very much encourage my clients to carry out pen and paper exercises mm. to take it from a subjective to an objective position mm. so you can clearly see what's going on so really if there is risk in both situations which there is we need to actually quantify what will happen if I move what's the likely outcomes and if I remain where I am what will happen if I stay <laughs> you see, uh, my, my bit of worry here is that mm. people are comfortable staying where they are mm -hmm. I think they don't realize there's much risk over there. But when you mm. tell people to move on to the next level, mm. it's like, wow, I can't do that. It's difficult. It's challenging. Mm -hmm. For example, telling somebody who is about 40, 45 years to go to school, you will say, no, mm. he would like to stay where they are. Most of the time, people are comfortable at their mm. comfort zone. But now you are trying to tell us that there's still risk over there. There is a, a lot of I don't of think risk. people really... <laughs> they really see that picture very well. Well, people may not see it, but people are living it every day. Mm -hmm. They're living it where there is unhappiness, um, there's dissatisfaction. Yes. Yes. There's a feeling of being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, very much of the time we're quite grumpy. You know, we're, we're, we're not feeling that things are working right for us. And that's all because we're staying in the same situation, which actually we have outgrown. So in those feelings, um, it can go either one of two ways. That's a critical point where all these feelings are actually being uh, pressurizing us. We can go further down that road, leading to depression, leading to you know not seeing any, any escape mm. route, or so we that can is that is that is one powerful risk staying on your comfort precisely, zone. Precisely, yes. Wow. Yes. Or we can decide to move into the risk zone, which is actually the stretch zone. It's a, a zone of stretching yourself of acquiring new skills and learning new trains of thoughts and seeing new perspectives, or, um, or into the learning zone, which does require us to be open to new opportunities and um, take those opportunities up. This is very revealing, you know, because um, from what you are saying, now people staying at one level for a long period of time, mm -hmm. probably they think is the best level because there's not much risk attached to it. Mm. But even when you look at the emotions, the stress exactly. of doing the same thing and yes. not getting results, yes. you know, that's why they say insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Over and over again. But at the end of the day, you want, you want different results, but you are doing the same thing. Exactly the same. So it's in it's one way or the other, that is more risk than even moving to the next I level. I exactly. I mean, <laughs> in addition to that, um, it is that we are so used to what we know. Exactly. That could be people. It could be places. So, for example, you know, you're driving to work, like you mm. go to work mm. on the bus, yeah. and you know, you wait for people to ring the bell, etc. Yeah. We um, do the same thing all the time, yeah. and we never. What we should do, we should do something as simple as take another route to work. Mm -hmm. Yes, change your routine every day. So, therefore, you are actually um, introducing change into your life, and you're realizing certain things about yeah. how you feel about the change. Yeah. Um, your your perception is is shifting. And those little things can contribute to a great blueprint 
for changes that other people present to you. Mm -hmm. So we ourselves initially need, need to be in command of the changes that take place in our lives. Um, and it can start off in a small process, yeah? Even um, change your style of dress, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a case of um, uh, one of the skills, and I will mention a skill of um, the principles of change management, mm -hmm. is actually to be prepared to reinvent yourself. You know, and it's about wanting something new. Now, you've mentioned something very important, if I can just touch on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you spoke about telling people, which as a trainer, yes, we train and we guide and we um, facilitate mm -hmm. people to um, expand their awareness in change. But as a coach, and when I support people through change processes, um, I actually use um, particular techniques um, and models to help people to recognize that they actually have to be in control of the change mm -hmm. and they need to make decisions, they need to recognise the pain that they're feeling mm -hmm. because of what they <laughs> where yeah. they're presently at. Because yeah. it is painful, yeah. yes it is painful, and to think about what pleasures can be gained from a new situation. And mostly um, a risk of um, one of the reasons why we resist change is because we have no um, model for what is to come, no mm -hmm. model at all. So similarly, as it said, you know, the phrase is seeing is believing. Yes, seeing <laughs> yeah. is believing. Yeah, because we can't see what's we going to see happen. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, 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 at least you want to see some light in a tunnel, right? <laughs> exactly. I have a friend, he said there's no light in a tunnel, not even at the end. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. You know, that is a very, um, right. it means that he's in a serious situation that, you know, um, he's just giving up, you know, yeah. but. Yeah. The point is, change is very, very important in our lives. Yes. If we don't manage it well, there's no way we can make it. Yeah. Um, if I can touch on your friend, actually, mm -hmm. uh, using him as an example, if that's okay to do, mm -hmm. um, it may well be to present with him some um, awareness of when he has been in a similar situation mm -hmm. at some point in mm -hmm. his life, and actually, I made it through. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, we, we are feeling creatures, we have experiences, and I can guarantee, I, can, I don't even know him, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I'm certain that there have been some challenges where he has um, surpassed mm -hmm. and, and come out the other end of. Exactly. However, we choose, all of us, all of us but yes. this is the point, we choose to see the dots. Yeah. We don't see, see the, space. the spaces. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because last week, we talked about um, how um, how to create a winning mentality right. with Ellen Powell, and yes. that was very powerful. Yes. And he made one profound statement that success is about 80% mindset yes. and 20% skills. Yes, precisely. So it's all up here. Yes. Because if you've achieved something before, mm -hmm. then there is always the probability you can achieve the next one. I, exactly. But yes. we always dwell on the negatives yeah. rather than the positives. Yes. And this makes life difficult for all of us. Mm. And I think it's easier for mm -hmm. us to think negative than being positive. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about beliefs. It's about the, the, the beliefs that we hold. And you, at the start of the program, you introduced by saying that, you know, the world is changing mm. at a fast rate, mm. which it certainly is. And because the world is changing rapidly, our belief system has to be right. And what we tend to do is that we um, have limiting beliefs, such as, oh, I can't do this, mm -hmm. oh, it's too hard, you know, and there's no one here to help me, where there's no evidence at all to support these beliefs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is that the beliefs we have about what the change is, you know, if, if the beliefs are limiting, we actually inherit these from other people. Yes. We take someone else, um, in my coaching sessions, people mention to me sometimes, oh, you know, I've, I'm going to be made redundant. And somebody else has said, it's hard to get a job, it's hard out there yeah. and I have to shift That's the perception. <laughs> yes. It's a Ac perception. Yes and exactly. <laughs> um, tell me about your skill set, mm -hmm. tell me about your um, you know your, your profile etc and actually it may be true for them but is it actually true for you? No. And their category have to be honest and say Excuse well no. Me. Yes. Wow. Yes. It's true. Yes. Because sometimes we use somebody's scenario mm. and use it on our life scenarios. Yes. And which doesn't work exactly. because the fact that that person has been redundant for two years doesn't mean that you'll be redundant for... That's right. That's right. See, life, life is... Nature is so special that everybody has got his own way of doing things. Yes, and yes. It, it, it doesn't mean that things that have happened to A will happen to B. Exactly. No, no matter how the system is difficult, there is no guarantee that 
what happened to A will happen to mm, you. So we, yeah. we need to really weigh the balance and mm -hmm. take some of these perceptions that mm. you're really talking about. Well, well, that's about transforming the limiting beliefs. And it's about being, um, being prepared to move from, and this is another transition, to move from the comfort zone into the stretch zone and the learning zone, where as a personal performance coach, um, I help people to make that move safely. So when people come to me, it is very much because they either want some change to take place because they're not happy with where they're at, or they need to know how to manage through this change. And the, 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 the movement from comfort to discomfort, or which is what people expect to experience, yes. um, or it, it is moving through the, um, to the comfort zone, so sorry, to the stretch zone, which is what I help people to do. Is it because of the fear of the unknown? Um, that is another resistor to change. Um, again, it's because people need to um, have evidence. So therefore, what can we do? We can actually um, go and do some research. We can um, speak to people who have been in a similar situation, you know, try to determine what happened for other people um, or, you know, try to um, find that information um, about the thing ourselves. I'm really loving it. I'm really enjoying this. And please, don't keep this to yourself. Call a friend to call a friend and just listen to this powerful topic that we are discussing here. How to manage change. We are going for a quick commercial break and when we come back, we are going to continue our discussion.
Welcome back to the Next Level TV program. And this is your regular host, Oscar Bimpo, in the driving seat, taking you to your destination of success. What a wonderful discussion that we are having here. We are, we've all experienced change in our lives from one way or the other. Everybody in this life have experienced change. The point is, how do you manage the change better to really achieve your goals in life? And that's what we are here talking about. Because some people are able to handle change better than other people. The point is, no matter how good you are, change can always hit you. And so for some people, when they fall on the ground, they cannot wake up again. But there are some people, they shake off the dust and they pursue their dreams. And that's what we are here to talk about. And I have with me powerful Rebecca Gordon, who is an expert in this field, change management. She is the CEO of Satellite Coaching, Life Coaching um, um, Coach. Yes. Set, satellite Life Coach, yeah? Yes, that's yes, 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 yes. So um, welcome back to Zip TV and you Thank are you. on the Next Level TV program. Thank you. Awesome. I'm really enjoying this. Yes, so, so am I. I'm having a great time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Change. Yes, yes. It's, 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 it's a very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. Change which um, when we talk about change, um, if I can say, mm. um, it is that um, we immediately attach negative connotations to the word mm. change. change yeah. Yes. Yeah, in my course, what I encourage people to do is to actually um, look at synonyms for change um, using a, the thesaurus. Mm -hmm. So if we were to look at what change actually means and look at all the words that it can mean, it actually means transformation. Mm -hmm. It means metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. It means variance. Mm -hmm. You know, it means to actually move into a wonderful new, new state. Just like when the butterfly is changing from, you know, going through the cocoon yeah, and coming yeah, into yeah. being a, a butterfly. Mm -hmm. So actually change um, is very positive, um, but yet we immediately attach negative connotations and therefore we attach negative emotions. Um, at this point, I just want to talk about language yeah. with change. Yeah, language with change. But before I go that, we know yes. we were talking about change in so many aspects, right? I read something about change mm. uh, in terms of the Tarzan swing. Mm -hmm. They say the Tarzan swing when it is it is like a loop right mm. but the way it looks like it means that it touches to the people on the lower bottom mm -hmm. is it the people on the lower bottom in mm. in organizations in family wherever it is mm. are they the most people affected by change um well in terms of um in the work environment and that may work very well be tr true to say because um, we have managers who um, instill these new ways of doing and, uh, and being, <laughs> which it creates a new way of being upon us. So that's instilled. Um, as a coach, and I've worked with people in terms of um, uh, certain challenges I have at the workplace, there are actually strategies in which you can manage your manager. So although immediate strategies to manage <laughs> your manager, there are some wow. strategies to manage your manager. <laughs> wow, yes. there are especially indeed. the difficult ones. Yes, there are indeed. <laughs> yes, and it sort of like relates to uh, McGregor's theory of X and Y, um, the X and Y um, theory of management, um, and there are particular bullet points um, which I share with my coaching clients as to what they can do. So although immediately you feel quite disempowered because your manager's telling you what to do and what to change about your work processes. Um, there are strategies again it's about strategies and techniques and yeah, tools exactly. that you can um, be empowered without your manager even knowing it <laughs> yes wow. yes so I mean um, when I I've gone through a series of changes in my life um, and as I said before I compartmentalize my life so I distinctly know that I've had the change of um, coming from my parents being divorced um, which gave a lot of emotions yeah. um, to um, myself um, you know meeting a partner um, to then having a child and um, to then um, working part-time, working full-time, being made redundant, um, you know, starting university, you know, having the death of a spouse. So, you know, those life stresses which we, sto we, spoke, we spoke about. Um, and interestingly, um, one change which was, was, was my divorce, and I'm quite happy to talk about that. And it's important for people to know that, as you said, with the Tarzan swing, mm -hmm. I actually went along to see a relate counsellor because I wanted to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a coach then, so I didn't understand the emotions. And what she said to me um, is quite true and it has remained with me and I share it with other people. She said, actually, when you're going through this and we can attach it to any change, 
your emotions will swing from here mm -hmm. right up to the extreme, mm -hmm. back here, right to the other mm -hmm. extreme. Yes. And when you actually understand that, you're in a better position to work with yes. your emotions. Self-awareness. Yes, exactly, yes. That yes. is the only way you can have solution to the problem. Yes, yes. So self-awareness is um, distinctly about labeling what you're feeling here and acknowledging the feeling. And um, there is a process which I um, came across in my research and it relates to um, a gentleman called Lester Levinson. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1952, um, he was a scientist. Um, and as a scientist, he was told that he had cancer. Now, being a scientist, he thought, well, actually, I don't accept this at all, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not into this, you know. Um, you know, this illness is, is going to cause me to die, you know. I'm, I'm a scientist, for goodness sake. So what he did, he did some research on himself, and he recognized that when he moved into a negative thought and um, using negative language and negative emotions about his illness, about the cancer, his cancer got worse. But when he was more positive about it, he you know, exposed himself to a positive environment, mm -hmm. positive language, positive tra train of thought, his um, uh, emotions were more positive and the cancer seemed to you know, er eradicate a little bit, mm -hmm. yes. So he devised a technique which um, I support my clients with in order to help them to manage the emotion. Mm -hmm. And um, the technique that Lester Levinson devised is called the release technique. So that okay. is about managing your emotions yes. during the change process. Yes, there's a particular way to carry out the release technique, um, which is basically to um, uh, identify the emotion. So, for example, let's go back to the person who, whose benefits have been cut, mm -hmm. yes, or who's lost their job. Yeah. Immediately, what's the worry about? What's the worry? Bills. Bills, <laughs> yes. How can, I, how can I cope with the bills? So what sort of feelings and emotions might come with that fear of not being able to cope but with the bills? it's very difficult managing those emotions. Well, I'm going to go through the technique now, wow. if that's okay. Yes, yes. So, go on then. Okay. So, um, because people would like to know this. Exactly. And the thing is, is um, again, I'm ca calling up the um, principles of coaching here because it's very much about trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And we have to trust something if we're moving into the unknown. It's like you need a, an anchor, something yeah, to hold yes. on to. You know, so there we need to... some platform I exactly. for you to operate. Yes, yes that's right. Mm -hmm. So this is something that people can try. And you can just try it by yourself. So what it is, is that the bills, um, there's worry there. There's anxiety, okay? So first of all, label the emotion. Let's go for um, anxiety, okay? So on um, a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is there's little anxiety about this, and 10 is there's massive anxiety. What number am I at? You could be at number 8, number 9. I can't pay my bills. Mm. High anxiety, yeah, anxiety okay? Yeah. So we've acknowledged the emotion. The thing then to do is to um, actually s say to yourself, now how is this anxiety helping me right now? Is it helping me? The answer's going to obviously be no, it's no, not helping no, me no. to it's feel better. Worse, yeah. It's making things worse. Yeah. So this is the thing and it's about trusting this process. Say yes to the anxiety. Say yes to the anxiety. Anxiety, I love you, I know you're there, I acknowledge you. Yes, I know I'm feeling this feeling. However, anxiety, I actually don't need you right now and I give you permission to leave. Okay, and the, the, the process does take some time to go through, but this is just in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So really, you're actually allowing yourself to move through the emotion. emotion. What we tend to do is that we hold on to the emotion of anxiety, mm -hmm. fear, not recognizing that it's not a, a permanent state, it's a temporary state. Mm -hmm. It's only permanent, it only becomes more permanent if we um, attach um, energy to it. So therefore, the energy might be to really feed the emotion yeah. so that it becomes big and it becomes yeah. this great massive thought yeah. form that becomes the, pr the reality. Yes. When actually we want to give it permission to leave and to relax into letting go of that and relaxing into something else that will be presented to us. Mm -hmm. So when I go through that technique with people, and I've done it a f many times in my courses, um, the uh, person who volunteers <laughs> to receive that um, you know, um, support, they, I then ask them, well, now on a scale of one to 10, where is the anxiety? And they say, well, actually, it's about two, it's about three, you know, it's quite low. And you can actually see their state change, they're more softer. And at that point, 
when you've released the emotion, you then have to immediately get a pen and paper and just write down all of the thoughts that come to you about how you can manage this, what else is possible, what else I can do to um, now that I've let go of this emotion that was holding me back and clouding my thoughts. So that's one technique. I mean, there are a few techniques, but that is one that um, clients I've worked with have given feedback. I know now how to move through this emotion and not hold on to it. So it keeps me stuck where I so am. So it's about trying to relegate the negative thought or the negative thinking yes. to the background yes. and trying to bring in positivity. That's right. And again, this goes back to the pen on the floor. Mm. Um, you can't try on, you can't do it unless you, you do it. <laughs> yes, you have to because knowledge um, is powerful, but knowledge only works if it's applied. You wanted to talk about language. In yes, change. yes, yes, yes. Um, I think I've mentioned it um, in a roundabout mm. sort of way. And it's just that, for example, if we call um, a change a problem, it's a stressor. You know, it's this negative thing that's happening to me. Then actually, that's the energy we're going to create, which the energy is, um, sorry, the emotion we're going to create, which the emotion is um, energy in motion. Mm -hmm. So the, if, if, if I were to relabel, and um, it's Anthony Robbins, actually, who gives a great mm -hmm. um, analogy, and he says something like he was in a meeting once, and he was talking to these two gentlemen, and something quite negative happened. One person said, oh, I'm really angry about this. Mm -hmm. And the other person said, well, actually, I'm annoyed. Mm -hmm. And immediately, each of those words about the same situation mm -hmm. give a different energy. Yes, indeed, indeed. So if we say that um, a change is a challenge, or it's a mes metamorphosis, um, it's a variance, it's an adjustment, mm -hmm. um, it's something that I'm regulating mm -hmm. about my uh, movement to come, then um, it gives a whole new perception. And this is very crucial. It's about changing the perception. Wow, very powerful, very, very powerful. Emotions and language mm -hmm. in change. Mm -hmm. You know, some people stress on the negatives. Mm -hmm. That is the negative ways mm -hmm. and it becomes part of them and it makes the change process very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and our ways are powerful. Mm, our words are indeed um, powerful. Um, there is a concept called thought forms where and the language that we speak um, actually creates um, a movement and of energy. And um, I think the term, I'm not an expert on this, but I believe it's um, epigenetics, um, which is where a, a conscious collective thought that nations can carry, communities can carry, you know, and families can carry. So it takes um, something catalytic event or the person to change that negative um, energy that um, has been there all the time. It's about being bold actually to try something new. What are some of the key things that one needs to be aware of when going through the cycle of change? Okay, um, the cycle of change is important and again it's about awareness. When we know where we are in change, we can, we, we can position ourselves and know what the challenges are. So um, within the cycle of change, there are six stages. And I've mentioned some theories already of change, which were um, Hobson, Sklosberg, and Kubler-Ross, also Martha Beck. Um, this cycle of change um, relates to managing your behavior. And this is a theory by um, Prochaska, who developed this theory in 1977. And um, he's presented six actual um, places or stages in the cycle uh, of change and the first one is pre-contemplation and um, then there's contemplation then there's um, pre preparation preparedness then there's um there's maintenance i'm sorry there's action and then there's maintenance and then there's relapse okay so what we need to understand is in the pre-contemplation stage we're actually aware that there's something wrong we may not be totally honest about it, but there's an awareness actually something has to shift. In the contemplation stage is where we're actually, okay, I'm at the stage of, I'm going to make the move now to make this change. You know, this change, you know, the, the, the government have cut my money here. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, this is the situation, but I've got to do something. I'm taking responsibility, 
okay? Then in the third aspect, which is preparation, we are looking at, well, what resources do I need, okay? So it could be the resources of uh, maybe I need to go on a course, maybe I need to job search three times a week, maybe I need to, you know, employ the services of somebody who's going to support me here or find myself in a community setting, but we're preparing ourselves in any case to move forward. And then we go into action. Again, we have to apply. So it's doing the thing, and um, then we m maintain and look at um, what approaches we need to do to maintain that state of moving forward. Um, what the important thing to say is that relapse can occur at changes in that cycle. And um, it is to know when we're in danger of falling off, if you like, mm -hmm. so that we can um, get back on at a certain place within the cycle um, and continue on the journey. You can pass through the change. Yes. And reach a certain level where you think, wow, this place is okay for me to really have mm -hmm. some breathing space, right? Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to sustain change? Um, there are particular principles. Again, we're talking about the principle of change management. You know, today you've talked about so much principles and it's like we are not learning, are we? Because uh -huh. life is based on principles. Well, it's a case of, this is the whole point about the course. Is it that um, anybody tells us this, <laughs> for one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where do we get this information from? You know, wh where is it that, who is it that sits you down? Um, and this is what parents do actually need to do. Anyone who's listening to this program, please do share this with your young people, with your family members, because um, we take it for granted that we should automatically know this. No. But why should we? No. Yes, what, what, why should we? Um, so to sustain... These are soft skills. They are not, they are, they are not taught in schools. They're not taught in schools. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So in terms of when we go to university and we get our degrees, <laughs> I mean, Erica Badu has said in one of her songs that actually it's only a certain number of degrees that we attain when actually life is 360 degrees. Yes. Yes, yeah. 360. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But we don't get the 360 in any of the institutions. Mm -hmm. We actually have to learn ourselves. And a lot of us, we learn the hard way. Yeah. Yes. You know, we have knocks. Um, I, when I was going through one challenge in my life, um, one of the things I did to help to maintain my um, buoyancy through change was that I used to listen to Ayanna Van Zant. Mm -hmm. um, I, read, I read her books, I listened to her audio tapes. Um, so I got support from somebody who'd been in that situation um, from high to low to high mm -hmm. again so I could understand what she did. Yeah. So um, in terms of sustaining change, um, uh, might it be that we can mention some of the skills that mm -hmm. can help us to do that? Yep. Yeah. So um, we've said we don't know what we don't know. So the first skill is to acquire some knowledge. So again, do your research, get some facts, get some figures and quantify. Okay. The second skill, um, I'll, I'll share a story if I can. Yeah, yes, well, yeah. Briefly. <laughs> briefly, okay. Um, there was a boy and he was on, on, a, on a hillside and he had to move a boulder. And um, he was pushing and pushing this boulder and the boulder wouldn't budge. And from the bottom of the hillside, he heard his dad shout up and say, son, use your resources. So the son thought, okay, what resources are there? So he thought, I know. I'll go to the other side of the boulder mm -hmm. and I'll pull and I'll talk to try to move this boulder mm -hmm. and it wouldn't budge and um, he got quite frustrated and the father shouted up son use your resources so what the boy did he actually saw a stone a rock over there and he saw a plank of wood over there so he got those to try to lever this mm -hmm. boulder mm -hmm. so he jumped on one end of the plank trying to shift the boulder would it shift what do you think? Mm. No, it didn't shift. Mm. <laughs> Again, the father shouted up, son, use your resources. Ask me to help you. And this is the lesson, mm. is that actually to get support through change, we need to ask people to help us. Oh, wow. Yeah? yeah. We need to ask people who may have gone through the process. Yes. And are at that stage, they've surpassed it. Mm. So they understand what we're dealing so with here right now. It's about finding mentors. Finding mentors, finding a coach, finding yeah, someone. So and there is a difference between um, independence, which is great, mm -hmm. and interdependence. We actually want to make connections with people mm -hmm. who um, are not in the same place or have gone through um, that process. So therefore, um, we talk about being self-reliant, which is a great skill to have. Mm -hmm. Self-reliance is good. 
but at its extreme oh, yes. it can be a weakness exactly. because we're battling by ourselves independently yeah. when we could seek support that's very powerful mm. very very powerful so the son didn't see what was happening around immediately but the answer yes. was just by the side exactly yes so sometimes <laughs> we look up once the answer is just down. it's just there right in front wow, of our wow, eyes wow. because we're so busy looking at the dots mm -hmm. exactly exactly <laughs> yes you talked about some skills that we need about change mm -hmm. right and these skills how can people acquire them um, it's well worn. People can come to my free course, wow. <laughs> <laughs> which is called How to Master Change in mm. Challenging Times, mm. um, which is due on the 28th of June. Um, and it's about um, acquiring the skills through one, and getting a life coach can help you. And I'm a big advocate, not just because I'm a personal performance coach myself, but because I am also a coach. I have my own coach. Mm. So yes, um, as a coach, I walk the talk. Mm. I'm my own first client. Mm. But what my coach does for me is that she helps me to stand outside of myself and to see things a little bit more clearly. So um, even though we may be at whatever professional stage in our, in our life that we're at, um, when we have someone who can help shift us from um, the um, state where we're at now to where we want to be, um, we'll get through much quicker and faster than if we were to work alone. So when we're looking to uh, make a change or the change has been imposed upon us, what we do need to do is to set some goals. Think about the outcome of where you want. Mm -hmm. What do you want to have control of? What can you control about you that can help you to, to get there? That's identifying where you are and where you yes. have to be. Yes. And it's about seeking information. It precisely, yes. Your last word. My last word is to that... all the people out there. Okay, my last word... All the word. beautiful people out there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for tuning in. Um, my last word is actually um, a couple of things. What I would say is that um, there's no reason for us to suffer alone. You know, sometimes as communities of people, we suffer in silence. Speak to people. Find someone who's been through this, go, who's gone through what you're going through if you're experiencing change, and um, get some facts and figures. The other thing is that um, you have the power to get through this. You absolutely have the power. It could be that within, immersed in the situation, you may not see that right now. Um, so you need to find a way to actually take yourself out of the picture mm -hmm. um, with the help of a coach through coaching. Mm -hmm. um, be objective. Um, use, um, and I'm going to put it like this, where there's high emotion, there's low intelligence, mm -hmm. so it's said. Yeah. So we actually need to do pen and paper exercises, we need to do work, we need to quantify, we need to get research, we need to do get facts and figures. So there is work to be done, which may seem quite um, heavy, quite tumultuous, but actually what we're learning are life skills that will serve us for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much for coming on the Next Level TV program. Thank you so much, And Oscar. I hope when I call upon you, you'll always be back. Oh, without a doubt. You see, I really <laughs> respect you because you are trying to influence your world. Mm -hmm. You came all the way from Birmingham mm -hmm. to come and speak to the hearts of people. Yes. We thank you very much for your sacrifice. Thank you. And we really appreciate your, all your time for coming on the show to bring a difference to our world. I have loved it. I don't know about you. If you are watching this program for the first time, I'm here to encourage you that every Sunday we are here 5 to 6 p.m. on Zip TV Channel 1. Every Sunday. Next Sunday, we are going to talk about how to use your daily experience as a seminar to achieve your life. Your goals in life is going to be powerful. I've got Dr. Gary Colton who is going to be on the hot seat and it is going to be powerful. Change is you. You are in a better position to change yourself, not anybody. I'm going to tell you, you are going to have a blessed week. See you next week and see you. Thank you very much.